to linebackers coach Jason Seymour back on the flats and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open up questions for uh, coach Seymour and we'll start with Rod McKenzie. Go ahead, Rod. Hey, Jason, welcome back to Georgia Tech. First of all, um, you, you spent a year away at, at Valdosta. How has that prepared you for taking the next step in your coaching career? Uh, anytime that, you know, you get, you get the opportunity to gain experience managing a defense globally, I think it makes you a better football coach. When, you, when you're a defensive coordinator, you have a global perspective of the game from personnel to technique to you just get a feel for what you like to do schematically. Uh, you, you, you get more in tune and more in tied into secondary play, defensive line play, all those things because you're accountable for the whole group as a, as a unit. Anytime, anytime that you get yourself out of the position coaching mode and into the infinite details of all the positions on the field, I think it makes you a better coach at any position. Um, it's a, it's, it also helped me get out there and recruit the state of Georgia a lot. So, so that was a neat opportunity for me. I don't have a lot, I didn't have a lot of experience doing that. So being down in South Georgia and just building recruiting relationships is another piece of it. Another question now from Kelly Quinlan. Go ahead, Kelly. Obviously, you know, uh, Coach Thacker and Coach Collins really well from your time uh, working with them. Do you feel like that'll make that transition easier? And then also having Coach Thacker kind of, I guess, floating around to coach different positions. How does that kind of impact you and does that give you someone else you can lean on if you need help with something that kind of thing sure uh I, i've known both of them for a long time i, I know what they uh, believe in technique wise schematically all those kind of things uh, we know how each other think you know how each other operates and what we feel is important defensively in the game of football um as far as the second part of the question um i think it takes it takes a lot of mental energy and a lot of time to manage a position. So, so when you're managing a position group at this level of football, you're, you're a football coach, yes, but you're also, you're a social worker, you're a mentor, you're a, it takes a lot of time and investment to, to help kids become the best version of themselves. So there's that piece as far as managing a position, but also the recruiting piece, you, you have to manage, you have to manage recruiting a, a position group, which requires lots and lots of time, a lot of time these days. So, so that's a lot of time invested in just a, a position group. Um, I really, I really feel like the role that I'm in now takes a lot of that off coach Thacker's plate. He gets to do a lot more, a lot more football and, and a lot more scheme and, and especially the way our, our staff is structured and the expectations that Coach Collins has from us as position coaches. Uh, he expects us to dive into our dudes' lives. He doesn't, he doesn't expect us to have transactional relationships with the dudes. So uh, I, I'm excited for that because I know most of them, and, and I was part of recruiting some of them. Um, so, so I feel really good about the situation. And if I, was, if I was a defensive coordinator, I would love to be in that situation too. If I was in charge of, of everything, uh, trying to manage a position and manage the recruiting piece and, and the relational piece and the, and the development of dudes is, is a heavy time investment. So, so I'm excited about the setup both ways. I feel like it's going to be great for all of us. So a question now from Ken Segura. Go ahead, Ken. So I'm wondering, you, um, the first part of your career, you were mostly out West. What was your connection with, uh, with Coach Collins when you came to the guy to Temple? So uh, in this business, there's always connections. So uh, me, and, me and Coach Thacker actually cut our teeth together. We were, we were GAs at Oklahoma State together. Um, we were uh, part of an awesome run there at Oklahoma State, the uh, Cotton Bowl and Fiesta Bowl and all that kind of stuff. So we got to experience that together as really young coaches. And uh, over the years, you know, 13, 14, 15 years, we've always kind of, we've always kind of kept in touch and, and had ideas on, you know, what we believe in defensively and all those kind of things. And uh, when I uh, left Montana, uh, that was kind of my connection to Coach Collins was Coach Thacker when he was the linebacker coach and then DC at Temple. So I was able to go up there and do some clinic talks and meet Coach Collins. And we kind of, we kind of viewed the Viewed the game the same way and a lot of defensive and a lot of defensive philosophy things. So it, it kind of just clicked that way. 
Got a question now from Rod McKenzie. Go ahead, Rod. Hey, Jason, you got a you have a lot of young players in your group. Uh, how how much are you going to rely on a player like Ace Ely to help you, you know, bring those guys along? Uh, Ace has been amazing with my experience, limited experience with him so far. Uh, that part's important to him. I think that's what make, makes Ace different. You have really good players. Um, everybody has different personalities, but the culture of the room and, and how the defense plays and just the little things on a daily basis, those things are important to Ace. The, the, the being a teammate aspect is kind of, is kind of what separates him, in, in my opinion. Uh, we're in a we're in a society where everybody's about you know their selves and trying to develop their self as a player and what can you do for me? Ace cares about other people. He na he naturally comes about that. So he he's a difference maker in that way, big time. I'm glad you asked that question. It's it's a great question and he's he's a different guy because he cares about other human beings naturally. So so it makes him it makes him have the dominant trait of leadership, which is, you know, we always strive to develop that in our position rooms, but it comes naturally to that dude. So, so I will, I'll rely on him heavy. <laughs> and I think, I think he, and it's not something that I have to demand of him and, and, and beat into the room and all those things. I think he's just that guy, you know? So, so I'm really excited to work with Ace in that way. Time for a few more. We'll do uh, one from Kim and then one from Kelly. Um, Jason, you're someone uh, just looking at your past. You've climbed the ladder and gone in a lot of different places, and it looks like you've done so with a with a family to boot. Um, can you describe just that process? But also now that you're in the spot where you're at a you know a position coach at a power conference school, and maybe what that means to you to have reached you know this that rung on the on the ladder. Sure. Um, I think everybody at, at the lower levels and, and guys that GA and all those kind of things have have, have aspirations of, of coaching at this level one day. Um, it's a it's a business where it doesn't always results help, you know, winning helps, all those kinds of things. It helps, but there's also a, a relationship piece to it. You know, when you when you coach college football. Um, you spend infinitely more time with the guys that you work with and the players that you coach than you do your family. So, so the, the trust level, um, all of those kind of things play into it and timing has to be right. All of those things. Um, and I, I think a lot of people that get into this business, uh, especially nowadays, uh, they're getting into it because they have aspirations of coaching in front of 80,000 people in the ACC and making money and, and all those kind of things. Um, I would say that you're probably not going to make it if that's what you're coaching football for. Um, if you're result oriented in this business and, and that's how you define success, then you're going to have a pretty miserable existence in my opinion. Uh, the results, the results are just the results are what they are. They're, they're an outcome of all of the little things that you do, do right. And if you do things for the right reasons, if, if developing players and recruiting at a high level because you, because you want to bring the best players and the best people into an organization and you, the people that you work with, you care about, those are the things that, that get you the results that you want. And then when you get the results that you want, that's how you move up the ladder. That's how you have success in this business. So to me, to be where I'm at today, I think it's, it's a testament of just doing things the right way, genuinely loving football and genuinely loving what the game brings to the young people that you coach and the people that you're around on a daily basis. So uh, it's very difficult. This profession is very difficult, especially, especially on a family. You have to have uh, the right support system at home, you have to live a purpose-driven life. If you're living a purpose-driven life, then the person ultimately that you that you're you know spending the rest of your life with when you start a family and stuff, they'll see that in you and understand. They'll understand your why that you that you know every day being a part of something bigger than yourself is important to you, and they can see that the difference that the difference that you're making in other people's lives and especially with my wife, she sees, she sees that in my everyday walk with her. 
and, and now she's she sees value in it because she's been she's been with me and, and has seen that and, and we both we both take that journey together and for for young coaches I, I always I always try to have the conversation with them you know especially when you're at the lower levels like at Valdosta State I had some 23 24 year old dudes working for me young GAs all those things um I always, I always try to spend a lot of time on getting guys to evaluate their why, because, you know, in this day and age, people are getting into the business for the wrong reasons, in my opinion. But uh, I know that's a long answer, but it's a, it's a, it's a life journey and a big, big decision to get into this business and how you succeed in this business can go a lot of ways. But in my experience, um, that that's the way I've done it. And uh, I think uh, that's how you add value in any, any job that you have in your life. Kelly, wrap us up. Coach, you, you obviously know the personnel a little bit. And and one thing that you guys, uh, you guys have struggled with uh, is just developing depth at linebacker that can can contribute in games. And now you seem to have some of that depth. Kind of what, do you, what is your approach for spring ball? And how do you see that kind of developing to where you guys can have four or five guys you can roll pretty regularly going into the future? Uh, the development's twofold. In my mind, um, obviously, there's a physical development that has to take place. Um, everybody, everybody thinks they want to play. That's that's at every level: ACC, FCS, Division Two. They all they all think they want to play, and then they get out on the field and, and they don't have success, and then they don't like their experience, and then they don't know if they like football. You know, there there, there has to be a certain level of development there physically. There has to be a certain level of development there mentally um i feel really really good about the room as far as the mental development especially with the young dudes the the physical piece that that coach corolla is doing but those are the things that you evaluate in spring ball is, is a guy physically ready to play the position is a guy mentally ready to, to play the position and then just going through spring ball and evaluating what we have and putting those guys in positions where they can have success. So what is their, what is their physical development? How can we use this guy to have success on college football Saturdays and not asking guys to do what they're physically not ready to do? So I'm really excited about getting out there in spring ball. And, you know, I was, I was part, of the, part of the process of recruiting some of these dudes. I know who the older guys are. Um, I want to see, you know, with with my own eyes, how far those guys have come and where everybody is, and and what we can do schematically to put those guys in positions to succeed and have a role, like you said, because you bring up a great point. Depth is depth is huge. So so going into the season, how do we not put ourselves in a position where if a guy gets hurt, we don't schematically have a structure to plug a guy in that can that can physically do it at this level. So those are all those. That's what spring balls for. Spring ball, spring balls to to answer those questions and, and start to develop a plan for the season. And uh, I'm excited about the room and, and seeing where everybody stands. All right. Thank you very much, Coach.